This is 5-Minute Feng Shui, Episode 54, Cubicle Feng Shui. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away and usually in about five minutes. Now, let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Today we're talking about office feng shui and in particular feng shui for cubicles. We uh, we know when you work in cubicleville there's a little bit different feng shui than when you have a standard straight up office. Some say that in feng shui when it comes to cubicles that um, you know it's it's just a box and uh, you're just your only difference is that it's not open at the top and you have no fixed door Um, and it is different than a standard office with a fixed door and a ceiling there's a a feeling of 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 an openness and lack of privacy sometimes and it feels a little hemmed in kind of like those uh, cages for uh, chickens who lay eggs <laughs> you feel I, every time I see them I always feel sorry for them because they're you're kind of you are a little bit uh, cooped up but even though you work inside of four padded walls that cubicle doesn't have to limit you with a little decorating inspiration and a few feng shui tweaks your cubicle can go from boring to boardroom so let's talk about employing some cubicle enhancing tips that get your feng shui on the executive track and could help you move up the career ladder well when it comes to a cubicle you have to make uh, an important step with the entrance the entrance really kind of sets the tone to your cubicle just like the entrance to your home sets the tone for your home So even if your cubicle is small and it doesn't have those beautiful oak doors of the executive offices, it's still a conduit for your career chi. That's why we want to make it auspicious and avoid getting it too cramped with coats or sweaters or cutesy stress posters like hang in there baby (laughs) with the cat, you know, hanging by its claws. Instead, what you want to emphasize is a clean, attractive, and uncluttered entrance. So when you enter your cubicle you want to look right at what's inside there do you have a pretty plant or is it a stack of papers or a big a big uh your inbox is ram full of files and folders that kind of thing um we want to make sure that even if you don't feel like you're the executive in the corner office that you try to adopt a, an executive feel there so and that starts at that entrance what by moving all those coats and sweaters away try to hang them somewhere you know out Uh, try to keep that area nice and pristine maybe you have a a plant if you've got a a counter or some kind of a desktop Uh, many times cubicles have a desktop that kind of runs around the cubicle if you have area an area there where you could put a plant that makes a big difference and it sets the tone for growing chi and energy and uh, and if you have anything that's blocking you from reaching you just look at at how you can create more of uh, an auspicious feel there and that starts with being uncluttered and clear maybe you have a nice lamp at the entrance uh, with a pretty plant something like that and yes silk plants are absolutely fine Um, a a really nice addition for career chi is adding an orchid an orchid in your office is that is the the flower of career and they last a long time and again silk flowers are perfectly fine so I like to dress up the entrance just a little bit make it kind of welcoming attractive have have a plant maybe a small desk lamp something like that that uh, that looks kind of warm and cozy and has a little executive aspect about it what's important is that you 
keep your cubicle streamlined. You don't want to overcrowd it because it doesn't take much and then it is overcrowded. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about that. So uh, just one selectively nice plant that is adds a, a little natural touch is is perfect and um, and gives you that great career climbing energy. So let's talk about a mission statement. This is something that you can put up on your cubicle that that says something inspiring uh, that is something re- work related you know uh, it's five o'clock somewhere that doesn't say anything but I want to get the heck out of here to, you, to anyone who comes into your office and especially if that uh, that visitor is an executive or maybe your supervisor so we don't want to have any kind of statements in there that are related to getting out of there like it's five o'clock somewhere or you know there's a beach with my name on it something like that Uh, what we want to instead put up there is a mission statement such as the buck stops here or uh, some other kind of statement that's related to work that is empowering or uh, I make it my job to to do my best job whatever statement mission statement that you can think of um, maybe you buy it from uh, successories that store that online store that has all those uh, great sayings about you know motivation and working hard and so on and so forth and what happens is when somebody comes to visit you it sets that sort of energetic tone of what to expect and it gives you something to kind of set your uh, sights on and to keep you focused on doing your best job and really applying yourself and um, and that success is is your outlook. I think it really says a lot. So we want to be careful without making our cubicles too kitschy uh, with too many toys or kind of goofy stuff. Uh, if you want to be an executive, you got to look the part. And that includes making your, you know, your cubicle look that part. Now, a really important area of your cubicle is called the lucky corner. Now, that's the, the corner that is opposite from the entryway. So it, if your eye is drawn to, let's say you stand in your the entry to your cubicle, and if your eye is drawn to the right far right corner or the far left corner, it just depends on where your entrance is, so I can't really tell you. But you, you'll know where the lucky corner is because your eye just naturally goes there. What Ever, uh, or wherever that um, that is, whether left or right corner, you want to add something very nice there that is going to pull the eye in and that s- gives a message. So maybe that is uh, a pretty crystal, a nice lamp, uh, a plant there. Uh, that's where your orchid could go, for instance. This is a really important decorator trick actually for making a space seem larger and that is to put something on the diagonal from where your eye normally goes and many decorators like in um, uh, showcase homes or in model homes use employ this trick they use that lucky corner now we know in feng shui it's called a lucky corner designers just call it you know um the the focal point or they or it's just the the corner that draws you in so it will actually this is the cool part is it can actually make your your space seem larger because your eye goes to the furthest point in the room and that's a really important thing because uh, sometimes we can feel a little bit cramped in those cubicles and by putting your eye and your vision toward that that further point you're going to make the the space or the space is going to visually feel a little bit larger to you but if again if you're at the entrance or at the front or you've got too much you've got you know it's crowded or you've got just too much stuff around and you're not employing that that lucky corner technique you'll feel more cramped, you'll feel more closed in. And uh, we don't want to do that. We always want to uh, draw our eye to that lucky corner and then activate that corner with something that is, um, that's going to activate it very positively, like for growth, like with a plant or your orchid, for instance, or I love Tiffany, small Tiffany lamps. You can get small Tiffany lamps that look just right for a, uh, for a cubicle that I don't know, that are about like 10 inches tall, 12 inches tall, something like that. And they have, uh, multicolored shades on them and the reason I like that multicolored shade is because it is um, 
it is it brings all the energies of all those colors to you and that's that's just nothing but pure benefit so those are just some ideas of things that you can put there but definitely get something in that corner that draws your eye uh, when you stand at the entrance to your cubicle now another very important thing is is the where you sit and if you are in a cubicle where your nose is stuck in a corner we got to get you out of that corner you know we go think back to grade school when I was in grade school this is when you know uh, the principal walked around with a long paddle with holes drilled in it just looking for someone to <laughs> to whack and uh, teachers that was the big principal and teachers in in grade school in my day would stick your nose in the corner and you'd have to sit there and there's there's something about being turned away and put it, your nose in a corner. Okay, I'm gonna I gotta say this. It's like from Dirty Dancing. Nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> we don't want to put you in a corner either. And we need to make sure that your nose is out of that corner. So if if that's the way that your computer is arranged. I believe most of the time, I'd say probably 99% of the time in all the corners or all the cubicles I've been into, you can move, and, I, and trust me, I worked in one, uh, you can move your computer so it's at the side and you can see someone coming in from the side. You, what you don't want to have is where your back is absolutely at, you know, turned and you can't see who comes in, or number two, worse, is that you actually are in line with the door. So really important that... Uh, where you place your computer so that when you're working at it or working at your desk, if you don't work in a computer, but I don't know who doesn't anywhere, any anymore these days, is that you don't, number one, sit in line with the door. You've got to get out of that, out of that doorway and move the computer. If the cables won't stretch, chances are you can get your IT person or maybe you can bring them from home and replace the cables so that they're longer and that you can move your your computer so that it's in a in a spot where you don't your back isn't absolutely to the entrance so we want we don't want to get out of that corner because that has a punitive kind of feel about it and no I really don't want you sticking up mirrors so you can look in the mirror and see who's coming behind you it's just sort of it's just an awkward thing and many people will say that's a cure you know no it's not the best cure for a a cubicle where you have your back to the entrance is to move that computer to the side so that you can get some kind of view of of out of your periphery and uh, that's a much much better place to be so try to do that if if you can uh, it's just so much better uh, for you and you'll feel more secure more confident and uh, and I think that you'll you you're not going to feel so exposed you know all right so let's talk about um when you're working if you can do this if you've got a credenza or you know i don't know how just depending on your cubicle sometimes they're in a u shape or there's a credenza behind you or a file cabinet something like that this is important for uh giving you a sense of solidity and uh for supporting you at work and that is avoid stacking files to your left or right it's better to put files and work folders and that kind of thing behind you let them stack up behind you where they can actually feel like support and then when you have work that is done it's behind you so this is a really nice way to uh to have that all that stack of work or files or whatever it is that you're working on behind you and this will support you uh, if you have any kind if, if you don't use files or folders or anything like that I know a lot of our our work now is just purely online and that doesn't get stacked up behind us put something back there that is going to give you support so for instance maybe you have uh, binders or uh, books that you need for research anything that you use in your work life that can go be placed behind you so if it's not work files place binders place books place any reference materials and information behind you and this will help support you the other thing is if you uh i love to add symbolic support as well and symbolic support that helps your career when it comes to feng shui without question my favorite activator for career and income is the hybrid dragon tortoise it is a a, a tortoise that has the head of a dragon and feet of a dragon and it is half dragon half tortoise you can find these in 
Chinese emporiums and gift shops. You can find them online as dragon tortoise. These are the ultimate career feng shui symbol. It is one of my absolute hands down favorite symbols in feng shui because it offers a lot of bang for your buck, <laughs> symbolically anyway. It is, if you've read anything uh, that I've written uh, or my newsletters, uh, you'll know how much I love these guys. I ha always have a couple of them and I noticed that they help raise my income, raise my uh, ability to earn more and uh, to continue to grow in my business. And I think that the, these are great symbols for anybody that is in a cubicle and aspires to that corner office. So definitely get yourself a, a dragon tortoise. Now you always want to make your cubicle welcoming. So try to create like a little seating area or a, a spot that looks welcoming and warm. Um, sometimes cubicles can feel like you're violating somebody's personal space by being in there you don't want that you want to foster communication with other employees not so much that they camp out and raid your candy jar but <laughs> but that it is inviting so that people can sit and have a conversation with you maybe about some some work um, that you you're you're uh, collaborating on or something you just you know you want to have that warm welcoming feeling and not that your cubicle is a domain to be defended so make that balance uh, between uh, having a cubicle that is just there for you just to keep your nose to the grindstone and having some balance with um, being welcoming as well and fostering communication with your colleagues and your coworkers. The other thing that we want to do is try to create a view. Now this is where <laughs> the real challenge for cubicles is and that is they don't always have a view and if you don't have a window well it may be hard to create a view but I I really encourage you to look for some kind of picture or some way to create a, uh, a pretty vista. So that might be a view of a mountain setting, a beach, uh, a, a pretty view uh, of, of any kind uh, that of spaciousness that looks off into the distance. This is a good stand in for a window. You know, now there are some uh, clever people that I've seen put in cubicles uh, an actual window and then they put a view behind it as if it were a window. And then sometimes you can get these these views that are that are lighted. I've seen those on websites like Amazon and they're they're views of a beach uh, most of the time and that are that are lighted so it feels like that daylight coming in we need to have some place to rest our eyes and something that is a touch of nature and just gives us a little uh, relieve some of that hemmed in feeling that cubicles can kind of do and this is a really good option for that and of course lastly you want to keep down the clutter in your office because it stops chi and it stops the flow of energy in your cubicle and that equals lack of flow equals lack of movement in your career or income and we don't want your place to be so cluttered or so full that you're not having more opportunities coming to you. You're not seeing uh, a rise in your position or what you're doing at work. We want to keep the energy flowing and that keeps you more efficient in addition to helping you in your career. Well, there you have it. These are some ways that you can manage working in a cubicle and make it as best as you can make it. Because I do think that, you know, I know I worked in a cubicle and uh, these are these are all things that I employed and I climbed my corporate ladder pretty darn quick. And, uh, and actually now I'm in my own business. So <laughs> I can attest that these things work and it makes a big, big difference. Uh, particularly if you're not sitting there with your nose in a corner. I, I gotta, I gotta say that's, that's a key one. So let's talk about those three tips that I always leave you with. And number one is use that lucky corner, put something there really nice. And remember the lucky corner is the room that's opposite and diagonal from the entryway. So it might be the right corner, might be the left corner. You'll know what it is when you stand in your doorway and where your eye is naturally drawn to put something nice there, a Tiffany lamp, a small lamp, a flower, um, a, a pretty symbol or a piece of sculpture. Just make it something that is noticeable and that pulls your eye because that will make your cubicle feel larger and it will activate that lucky corner and work for your career. So I, I love to, to use that lucky corner tip. 
Number two, try to turn your computer, get your nose out of the out of the corner, or make sure that you are definitely not in line with the door because you might be the one in in the line to go out the door. When your back is lined up with the door uh, of your cubicle, or you know, you have uh, your back is turned to the entryway, that means that you are going to often find that you have unpleasant surprises. This could be layoffs, this could be demotions, this could be um, a cut in your hours. It can be any number of things. We don't want to be overwhelmed by unpleasant surprises and sitting with your back to the entry is going to do that for you. It's a lot like standing with your back to the ocean. You never ever do it. And trust me, I didn't uh, I didn't really know about that until I lived in Hawaii. But I can absolutely assure you that if you can move your your computer so that you can see somebody entering either from your left or right side, that's going to put you in a much, much better position and give you more support and typically puts a wall behind your back so that you've got nice support behind you. This is critical. Uh, I can't say enough about it. So if you've got your back uh, to the entryway and especially if it's in line with the door, it's very dangerous. Please move that around so that you get more career stability and more options and more control. That's what we want you to have, right? All right, lastly is keep that entrance clear and attractive. We want to make sure that the entryway to your to your cubicle is not filled with coats and tchotchkes and, and you know, kitschy posters and stuff like that. Um, we want to have it open and clear because this is how energy gets to you. This is how opportunity gets to you. Having it all congested and that kind of thing is going to block opportunity, block income, block career growth. And we definitely don't want to do that because we want to encourage career growth so that that, you know, in another year, you're in an office. And uh, by taking some of these tips to heart, I think you're going to make a big difference in the way your cubicle feels, the way you feel at the office, and the way the office responds to you in your career and in your income. All right, well, this has been Cubicle Feng Shui. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. Thanks for listening today to 5-Minute Feng Shui. Be sure to join me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Feng Shui Katie. And if you're really ready to move ahead quickly, head over to redlotusletter.com and sign up for my free four-week e-course, 28 Days to Prosperity. You'll get daily lessons and tips on how to get unstuck and create financial flow in your life. Make it a fantastic day.